Are interest rates going to be creeping up before you have a chance to get yourself a house? Let's talk about that right now. Welcome to Sacramento's number one YouTube channel for all real estate news regarding Sacramento and the surrounding areas. So if that's you, hit that subscribe button and that bell will bring you bi weekly content. We also go live every Wednesday at 5.30. So tune in, let's get going and let's talk a little Sacramento right now. Okay, what's up Sacramento? Hopefully everyone's doing fantastic. I'm actually getting over a cold. So I apologize in advance if I do any coughing, wheezing, hacking, whatnot, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, my buddy's at New Way. What's up, guys? Also tune in at 6.30 when New Way goes live at 6.30 um, on their channel. If you don't know it, subscribe to it. It's an awesome channel to keep you abreast of everything going on in interest rate news, mortgage news, or whatnot. Or if you just want to hang out with a couple of two, two cool, really cool people, one of them drinks wine. It's a fun time. Okay, let's talk a little bit about right now what we're seeing in the market. And um, what I'm seeing right now is the fact that last weekend uh, was Thanksgiving weekend. It's usually slow, but oh my God, last weekend was brutal. The, 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 the amount of listings hitting out there were just like, it was just un- incredibly low. There was like nothing out there. I think there was like 30 listings that popped open during the weekend or something like that. It was kind of crazy. So the idea right now is where does that put us? What type of position does that put us in as far as for the people who are looking for homes, right? Because what I see in this market for the most part, you have on one hand, you have low interest rates or low inventory against interest rates that are rising. So a lot of people are feeling the, the I think the kind of like the stress, right? Of saying to themselves, like, I need to find my house before interest rates get super, super crazy, um, which as we all know, they're not going to get too crazy, but they are going to go up. So I think that this is what we're seeing right now in the market. I think the thing that's stressing people out more than not is that we're not just seeing inventory get, you know, during this time of the year, also caveat, the fact is interest rate, I mean, uh, inventory does it's just the slowest time. You don't see a lot of stuff being thrown on the market. People want to hang out with their hot cocoa. They want to hang out with their families. They don't want to list their homes. They don't want to leave their houses during this weather. They just don't want to deal with it. So normally during this type of the year, between like maybe like end of October till maybe beginning of February around there, you you know, listings tend to, there aren't a lot of listings on the market comparatively towards the market. Now, what we're seeing right now, which is crazy, is the fact that like it's just brutal. Um and we're seeing a certain type of buyer right now out there that, that I'm seeing more than not. The buyer that's saying to themselves, I'm not seeing a lot. I've been looking on Zillow and you know, um, I want a house, right? And I'm hearing all these people tell me that interest rates are creeping up and oh my God, I got to get myself a house. So it puts you in kind of a little bit of like back into the frenzy buyer mode where you're saying, I need to get myself something great. Oh my God, there's nothing great on the market. What do I do? So I want to show you one thing. And this is like, this is a house that um, we actually put an offer on this weekend and uh, we didn't get it. So, you know, just keeping it transparent. This is an offer up in Auburn. Okay. So we're talking about this house and it was listed on Friday. It was one of the, you know, the few listings that went up there. All right. So we're talking it listed for 675. It's a three and two, a little over 2000 square feet, a nice part of Auburn, really, really picturesque, beautiful, all that kind of stuff. Now, this house actually went into contract for, I think, the, and the agent told me this, you you know, here and there, I mean, you take it with a grain of salt. It ended up going for around seven twenty five, dollars and the buyer ended up paying for the fees as well. So this thing blew up, right? We're talking it had five offers. People were just throwing in offers and all this kind of stuff. Now, in my gut, after doing a good CMA for my clients, and I was, you know, I talked to them straight up and I was like, you know, I think that this thing is going to appraise anywhere between 670 to maybe like 690 at its best. Um, you know, and so, you know, we were up there in the bidding as well. But the idea also with a house like this is the fact that you're going to be paying around $5,000 for fire insurance too. And fire insurance can change over the course of years, right? Like, let's say something goes up in fire, in flames, you know, there's another burn zone close to Auburn. Your fire insurance is going to increase. That's not not something like, you know, Geico auto insurance, where all of a sudden, like you have a clean record and it decreases. It's going to increase. And, you know, so, you know, it was a pretty pricey house for three and two, you know, in Auburn. It was beautiful. It was a gorgeous house, great setting, all this kind of stuff. But at the same time, what I noticed for the most part is because of the weekend, because of the low amount of listings that were actually on for that weekend and because of the uniqueness of this house, but also mainly because probably there weren't a lot of listings out. People felt kind of that that kind of like stress out, like I just need to kind of like jump into stuff. Um, 
And, you know, for me at least, it was a little frustrating uh, to see it that way. And I was hoping, hopefully it, you know, I was hoping it wouldn't keep going on this way. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it just, it, it's crazy, you know, like it's crazy to see what the market is turning into right now with the low inventory. Um, you know, and like I said, I think majority of the things we're seeing out there are people who are like freaking out about grabbing a house before interest rates get higher. And they're kind of jumping into whatever is out there right now and just, you know, kind of freaking out. I will tell you one thing as myself live again, Matt, Matt, the mortgage guy, seriously rock star. If there is one, that's Matt. He's, he's a great, great friend and a, a YouTuber whose channel is blowing up. So I'd suggest like checking his channel out. Cause it's really good. I mean, he is like machine gun content, really good stuff. So Matt, hopefully you are doing well, my friend. And as you can tell, with the, you know, the sexy blues voice I got going on. It's, it's not treating me too well, but okay. So this house for the most part blew up. And what, what I noticed for the most part is that like, you're seeing houses like that. You're, you're seeing people who, you know, like sellers. In fact, I will tell you one thing as a seller, I would say you're getting kind of a second wind. If you're thinking about listing, you know, before inventory starts raising its evil head again, good head, you know, it's, it's a good thing. We want inventory to go up, but I would say right now when you're like in this kind of like low and people are kind of thinking to themselves, you know, what's the next weekend going to be bringing us or the following weekend. Like right now we're kind of in a big, like, you know, we're a little bit stressed out a little bit because we don't know if the trend of not listing during the holiday seasons is something that was holiday specific or people might be throwing in the towel for the entire holiday season. So this is the time of the year that kind of people kind of get freaked out. Now with the year that we've had in 2021, it's just a stressor for people who are looking to buy as far as jump into something before interest rates go sky high. Um, and like I said, not sky high but you know, they get up there, but in their minds in a lot of people's minds and buyers minds, when they're seeing stuff out there all over the, you know, the news, YouTube and whatnot, where interest rates are going up and up and up, people are kind of freaking out. So what I'm saying to you right now is you've got to create your own balance between like the low inventory on the market and the fear of interest rates. I think, like I said to everyone, if you're not working with a great lender, someone like Matt, someone like New Way, you should. Um, they can tell you a little bit about like what it means if you're buying at a 2.8. What if you're buying at a 3.5? How much house does that give you as far as like what the payments are and everything too? That's going to probably like alleviate a little bit of those those questions you might have. And I think it's absolutely like perfect. Now, another thing too, it was something that was kind of interesting. And most people might not know this because there might not be from Sacramento, but like last weekend we had, we were in the seventies, the weather was fine. Everything was good. People were out there. Now, the truth is that actually even hurt us even more because it gave all these buyers the incentive to, you know what, look, we're not doing Black Friday or we did Black Friday. We're up visiting some family. We like Sacramento. Let's go up and see some open houses and all this stuff. Open houses were going crazy. And so when you have like, you know, a lot of buyers who are out shopping, you have limited amount of inventory, you have open house, you have fantastic weather. I mean, it was just a crazy weekend. Hopefully what we're going to see in the next couple of weekends is that inventory rises. I think it definitely will rise for sure, but to the levels, hopefully it starts going, kind of going like a little bit in an upward peak because right now what I'm noticing is the buyers are very, very stressing about getting a home. So hopefully we're going to see in the next couple of weeks that inventory rises, rises, rises. Like I said, don't hold your breath. Like I, you know, during the end of this year, towards New Year's, and and you know, during the holiday season, it's just not something that we see normally. But you never know. I mean, if I was a seller and I said to myself, you know, like my house is ready right now, um, God, I would I would have loved to have taken advantage of the seller's market four months ago, and all of a sudden I'm seeing low inventory, and I'm seeing that maybe in an area that I live, Land Park, Toronto, something like that, you know, an area that's hot. If I throw my house up, it's going to be the only house that's for sale. I mean, I still think sellers can leverage that to to no end. I mean, I think right now, like you saw this, a house that probably will end up appraising, like I said, for you know, for probably my gut is probably like six eighty five, six ninety, because we did a pretty thorough CMA in the area, and you're seeing something like this that ballooned up to seven twenty five. So you know, I'm going to say that. Right now, just keep an eye on the market. If you're a seller looking to sell, I think that that you could still take advantage of this low inventory that we're having. And you know, as long as the weather is nice outside and you got yourself a good weekend or a couple of nice weeks of good weather, um, you know, and you have to pick it right and just do it right, I think you can take advantage of the market still if you're a seller. So I would say keep an eye out. All right. So another thing too we have to watch out for are 
uh, COVID and flu, as we see, like there's all this stuff happening, Omicron or whatever strains and everything too. Now, if this happens, you're definitely going to see a huge dip in whatever inventory is coming back on the market. You're going to see it go away very, very fast. People just are scared, don't want to show their houses. They're already on the fence. A lot of the sellers who were wanting to sell and were super eager to sell were already selling during the summertime and during the fall anyway. So um, that could actually put a huge tailspin in what we got going on now. Now, if you guys also have any questions about the market, new homes, areas, communities, all that kind of fun stuff, anything at all, please let me know. I, I stop my babbling and I will go direct to the questions. Now, okay. Now, a good thing too, I want to also tell these people, tell people out there who are looking for low inventory, um, a little trick. And this is a, it's not really a trick, but it's kind of a little bit of like uh, added value, right? For our clients, for the most part, if someone's looking in a specific area, we have a very good network of realtors in almost every single area in the Sacramento, Yolo, El Dorado, or Placer County. And so, for example, if someone's looking for a house, normally what you end up finding are there are certain agents out there who are keeping listings and they're saying, hey, look, you know, right now my client isn't ready, but they're going to be fixing a fence or they're going to be doing a roof or whatnot. But at the same time, if you can tell them, hey, look, I have some qualified buyers and they're ready to go. Do you have anything in the area? They're going to let you do a little bit of a, a let put you kind of in the know of what's going on in their area. So that's one of the th ways to kind of beat the low inventory market. I mean, it doesn't mean you're going to get a smoking deal in any 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 way, shape or form. But at the same time, um, what I notice is that there's a lot of realtors out there who don't aren't wanting to list right now. They're waiting for the holiday season to end and maybe to list at the beginning of January. So if your realtor knows, you know, has his click of kind of realtors that he knows or in the various areas that you're looking at, they should definitely be looking outside or thinking outside the box to kind of get you additional inventory. We've put a lot of off market deals in place, you know, um, so I would say that that's definitely an option for you if you're not finding the inventory you want to look for. Like my buddy Luann Shikasho out there in Elk Grove, she's always got two or three pocket listings ready to go. Um, you know, I got my friend Victoria San Filippo over there in Roseville as well. I got uh, what's called uh, Peggy Bowling over in Gold River too. So I have pockets of realtors that I go to directly and say, hey, look, do you have anything coming up? And they're pretty good because they know the clients that we work with are pretty solid. So that's it. All right. Question. Hey, Mark, are there any new homes left in Whitney Ranch? Um, yeah, that's tough. I'd say, okay, I went up to Whitney Ranch. Actually, I was just there almost, um, what was it, about two hours ago, Whitney Ranch, handing keys to probably the toughest, one of the toughest transactions I've done in my entire like year, Firebrand. Um, and uh, it was it was a great, a great house, gorgeous house. And it, we got in contract for just a little over a mil. Um, now, getting your questions. Um, there are, JMC has a handful of houses, Providence over at uh, Whitney Ranch. JMC has a pocket of ha houses still available. Um, I don't think they're that many, but they are not a big fan of like, I don't know. I like the JMC stuff. I think, I think JMC is a good builder. I think the, you know, times the sales rep. <laughs> isn't that great but at the same time like i think jmc is a great builder and i think if you're looking for whitney ranch specifically i would say um you know providence definitely has some floor plans available they're big ones too we're talking like jmc up in whitney ranch has those four thousand square foot floor plans it has the in-law units or the the next gen suites that are done right and honestly i'm even throwing in toll brothers on this one i think jmc in my opinion both in their community in Folsom, Sycamore Creek, and Providence over at um, Whitney Ranch, they have it, two units, um, uh, two floor plans that have the most rock star in law next gen units with a full kitchen. That's right, you get a stove as well, too. Those units are awesome. So, as far as floor plans, JMC really has stepped it up both at Sycamore Creek and um, as well over at what's called at Providence, sweet floor plans, big floor plans too. So if you're someone who wants a 4,000 square foot house, a really nice in-law next gen unit that is like full kitchen, you know, nice patio, that whole nine yards, I would definitely say check out JMC at Sycamore Creek at Folsom. And then I would say check out JMC at um, at, uh, what's called a Providence up in Whitney Ranch. Really awesome. You're going to be paying over a million for them, you know, just to let you know in advance, but it's pretty good. Now, the other builder that I'm seeing right now is um, Tim Lewis. Tim Lewis actually has a few models left to sell. I don't know if they have any view lots available still, but Tim Lewis is still building up there as well. 
And Richmond American, as of last week, has one home left. One, one home left. And after that, I think Whitney Ranch is all, is it's in the books. Um, now, if you're someone who really, really likes Whitney Ranch and everything too, I would say also like shoot down Wildcat and head over to 12 Bridges and look at my uh, Rockstar Community Saratoga by tw uh, Taylor Morrison. The bang for your buck, you can get the biggest lot out there. You can get a sweet house, the whole thing, views, Great community. Lincoln is exploding. 12 Bridges, you're like cradled between like Catavadera, Verdera, and you're like cradled near all that stuff. It's really, really a score still. Even back in the day, I told everyone on this channel that it was a score. And now it's like, it's, it's just an amazing community. It's super close. It's, I think, I think 12, 13 minute drive to Whitney Ranch. And I would check it out. 12 Bridges, Saratoga. Say, uh, say hi to my buddy Ed over there at, um, at Saratoga. So it's cool. All right, so let's go. What are your thoughts on Rockland versus Elk Grove? Ooh, there are completely different styles of like areas, like I guess you can call them lifestyles. Um, I'd say, okay, Whitney Ranch is like, if there was, you know, I live in Gold River, but if there ever was a separate community, Whitney Ranch would be that separate community. Um, it's it's gorgeous. You know, all the houses there are really, really nice. Um it's just a really beautiful community. They have that park in the middle. They have the elementary school. They have the the ranch house as well. It's just a beautiful area. It's it's up on up on the ridge, so it's different than Elk Grove in that way. It has a it kind of has a feeling that you're like in a community up on the hill where, but you don't really feel like you're so far up. Um, I will tell you one thing though about Whitney Ranch, and this is the only negative I do have about Whitney Ranch is the fact that it does feel a little bit isolated, right? You don't feel really as close to too much. You have to kind of, what is it? Maybe like to get to the freeway, I'm thinking maybe it's maybe about 15 minute, 10, 15 minute drive down there. Um, and then once you're on the freeway, you're either going to head into like, you know, probably Roseville, the Rockland area for shops and everything too. So it definitely is a different vibe. I would say Whitney Ranch, if anything for me is like more like a, it, although you know Whitney Oaks is the closest golf course to it, but like it, it reminds me of those kind of like resort type communities. You know, something you'd see something, you know, grab a glass of wine, hang out, relax. I don't want to say retirement community because it's not, but I just want to say that like if you live there, chances are that you're probably like working from home a lot, or you you work somewhere really super close by in like Rockland. The Roseville Drive is a little bit. I mean, it's not too much. Don't get me wrong, but during that five o'clock and the eight o'clock period, it's just a it's nightmare between the 65 and the 80. I got T-boned actually about a month ago there too. So I'll tell you that. Um, but I think the vibe in Whitney Ranch is gonna be million dollar homes, everything newer. You got the what's called the ranch house. You're gonna have a brand, there's a brand new elementary school that was built right in front of Richmond American. Um, there's a nice parks, nice views and all this stuff. You're a little far from stores, but it's a great lifestyle to be totally honest. If you work from home, you'd probably take a shop at Costco, pit, put it all in the refrigerator and you'd spend the rest of your day up there and you would probably not complain at all. So it's a gorgeous community. I mean, it's really, as far as in the Sacramento Metro area, I'm going to tell you that it's probably one of the communities that, um, everything's newer there. I mean, everything's definitely built. I don't think they have anything that was built prior to 2000 there. The community is like, literally they like put like, you know, homes, they put the, the house, all this stuff. And they started it up and it's really, really beautiful. If you guys don't get a chance to, um, because I was actually up there, um, like, you know, a couple hours and I was actually up there, um, the day before at nighttime, um, there's actually a lot of kind of holiday lights displayed too. So if you guys are driving around, you want to see a really, really sweet community, new homes, pristine community in Rockland. I definitely say, you know, take the family for a little spin, do some like holiday light and it, it's beautiful. You know, Whitney ranch can't complain. Now, how does it compare against Elk Grove? Okay. So here's the biggest thing. Where do you mean in Elk Grove? If you're talking about the seven, five, seven, we still have there's still a lot that needs to develop in the 757. Remember also in the 757 in Elk Grove, you're talking about like, they're going to be putting in a casino. So they're going to be putting in also additional schools there and everything. Elk Grove is going to be its own separate like thing, right? Elk Grove in, in reality is so much bigger than the Whitney ranch area, you know? And then if you tie in like the 758 over by Laguna, 
you got man-made lakes. It's awesome. You got amazing food in Elk Grove. Everything's a little closer by in Elk Grove as well. You kind of, even though with traffic in Elk Grove, it can be a nightmare. Um, what you're going to notice in Elk Grove is the fact that you feel closer because you feel like you're, like you're closer to downtown. And it just, it just feels a little bit like you're more metro um, located than like your Whitney Ranch. Um, I would say, though, you know, this, that community that was built up in um what's called madera madera over by taylor morrison is just gorgeous i think those houses the drake the sawyer i think elk grove is going to be just it's just is elk grove is like this like crazy like four or five year old kid right that's growing and they're tall and they're just excelling at everything and like elk grove is so has so much potential um like sabo is here as well hey sabo how you doing like the the land the the different types of living you can have in Elk Grove the closeness to the Bay Area the the plans that they have for Elk Grove which I will be doing a live in the next couple of weeks about the development of Elk Grove which will just blow you away Elk Grove is in its infancy right they still got a whole lot of land they got a whole lot of development it's growing like crazy Rockland there's not a lot of land left as far as what they're planning on building out there Elk Grove is kind of just it's going to blow up I mean honestly. Um, and what do I mean by that? Okay. So you got Whitney ranch and the price point in Whitney ranch to get in there is probably about a million dollars. Okay. Let's just say about a million, you know, here and there, that's what you're talking about. Probably the average price point of the house in Whitney ranch in Elk Grove. Elk Grove is just starting to kind of gain its momentum with houses like the Drake, the Sawyer. Those are million dollar plus houses, especially with the right upgrades. And then you got areas like that Sabo lives in like the, you know, the more kind of rural part of um elk grove that is just developing like crazy great land xfinity is going out there dropping cable as far as my thoughts if you buy an elk grove i think that it's just going to get better there better 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 the growth in elk grove for me is it's gonna be crazy now um it's flat for the most part you know but you got made made lakes at laguna uh, you got a lot of natural and all this kind of fun stuff to do in Elk Grove. You got that in Rockland as well. I'd say shopping is a little bit closer in Elk Grove, but it all depends on which parts of Elk Grove you are. The other thing that's crazy about Elk Grove, and a lot of people don't know this, is the fact that on Grant Line and um, all that stuff, they're going to be building a freeway that actually is going to be connecting Elk Grove to El Dorado Hills. So for those people buying Elk Grove, not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, that freeway is going to go Elk Grove, Anatolia, Folsom, El you know, whatever. But basically, it's not bad. I mean, so I don't know. Elk Grove, I think I think people are going to be looking back and going like, man, I can't believe you got something in Elk Grove under a under million dollars. So I don't know. I think Elk Grove has tons and tons of possibilities. And like I said, I'm not telling you like the second, but in the future, I'd say it's 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 interesting. There's a lot of big players coming out there in Elk Grove as well with Apple and all that stuff. So it, it's interesting. All right. I want to check out the Toll Brothers and Ranch over the weekend after seeing your video last week. What did you think? Tell me, what did you think of the Toll Brothers? I mean, like, first of all, my favorite model is the uh, one right next door to it. The big single story. Oof, really, really nice. Um, let me know. Comment right here. Let me know what you thought of the Toll Brothers. All right. Third, really cool play. Uh, <laughs> really cool people who have really cool cool youtube channels hang out in elk grove all right christian what is up my friend i do not like elk grove all my friends uh live out there <laughs> you gotta get new friends no i'm joking a uh, place feels very disorganized and you don't get uh, much for your money um here's the thing about elk grove i will say this is like like i said elk grove is still kind of like the 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 young kid right a lot of potential um, I mean, no one can knock the fact that it's one of the, the most competitive real estate markets out there because the price point is what it is. But like, you know, it still needs to kind of jump into like the million dollar market a little bit more. It needs to come into like building Bradshaw, all that kind of fun stuff. So there is a lot of development that still needs to happen in Elk Grove. Um, but at the same time, here's the thing. Remember, you never want to buy in an area that's that you don't ever want to buy at the premium, right? You always want to buy into an area where you kind of say to yourself, look, I'm putting down some money here, like crypto, like NFTs and all that stuff. Like you never want to invest at the at the at the peak, right? So you look at places like Elk Grove, you look at places like Anatolia or just other areas. 
And you have to understand that for the most part, even though people might say to themselves, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm looking for my forever home. The idea is that a normal person or, you know, an average person will live in a house from maybe like between five and 10 years. Now it's a little bit more extended just because, but for the most part, like that's what you're looking at. So, you know, you want it to be a place where you're saying to yourself, you want to get as much um, appreciation. So it's a little bit of a gamble, of course, real estate always is, but you always want to pick a spot that you say to yourself, like, man, I'm so glad I bought there because now my, I'm selling my house and I just made $300,000. And I think Elk Grove, if you do it strategically, I think, you know, five, 10 years down the line, you could be one of those people if you plan it right too. And now a lot of people don't know this, but you know, when you look at buying a house, um, you know, of course you love, you know, I want a four bedroom, three bath. I want this many square footage and all this kind of stuff. The other thing too, is remember, you can also go into the city of Elk Grove or city of El Dorado Hills and whatnot. And you can kind of see what stuff is being built in the area, what kind of infrastructure, what development, what kind of growth, what kind of plans they have for the future of a city or an area that you're buying into, you know, the, all, all, the main thing for anyone who's buying is like, you're also, it's your, it's your money, right? So you want to make sure you're putting your money in the right spot. And by doing like research on the area, by figuring out like if, you know, when the Arco Arena is going to be torn down, when's that medical school going to be built? When is that freeway from Elk Grove to El Dorado going to be, going to be put into place? When are those roads that were planned to bring in West Sacramento to be closer to downtown Sacramento going to be in place? All those little things only add to you hedging your bets if you decide to buy something, right? So other than looking on Zillow and seeing some pretty houses that have nice backyards and nice updates, ask yourself too, like what's, wh what do we see in the next five years happening in the city? Like, you know, what is the 757 going to be doing in the next five years that's going to help my money and my appreciation on my house? Um, so that's the thing, at least for me, I mean, like, like I said, with you guys, I'm going to be moving in January. I'm selling my house, moving in January. And I've already started looking into like exactly what cities, areas, and all this stuff are growing. I realize the fact that even though my wife is saying this is going to be our forever home, okay, it might, right? But at the end of the day, I, I really would love it to be if in five or 10 years we decide to sell, I could say to myself, I did the research. I figured out a good place to buy an area that's developing, it's growing, it's putting in maybe three or four new schools during the course of the next five or 10 years. It's doing this, it's doing this, it's doing this. I hedged my bet as much as possible. So I encourage anyone out there. I mean, all those plans, all the meetings, all the city council meetings, all that stuff is online. You can definitely look at it and figure out exactly which areas are developing in Sacramento. Now, the beautiful part about living in Sacramento, and this is for everyone out there who's getting hit with those like 2022, we're crashing, we're burning, all this stuff. Truth of the matter is Sacramento is very blessed in the fact that we do have a lot of land. Like, you know, I don't know if the new home companies are going to keep increasing per release, but I can tell you one thing. I've talked to various new home builders and they are they they still have their plans for their new communities. There's new homes being thrown in there. Now they're going to, a lot of the builders also that are coming in in 2022 plan on doing affordable housing in Sacramento too, which is much needed. So you're going to still see more building happening in Sacramento. And like I said, a lot of these places out there who are freaking out about this and that, and the other thing, they're freaking out, oh my God, you know, like the job market here isn't that good. So when the, you know, when, you know, the crash happens, our, the house prices are going to dip and everything too. Sacramento also is blessed because we got a lot of jobs with healthcare. We got a lot of jobs with school system, school districts, um, you know, medical, Apple, Amazon, uh, what's called, we got um, Oracle. We got, I mean, Intel. I mean, it's a nice, solid job market. So that we have plus land. So at least for me, I look at it and say to myself, no one knows what's going to happen in 2022, but hedge your bets as much as possible. If you are going to make a move, if you are going to buy a house, do the research. Don't just do it for a TV you're thinking about buying. Do it for the house. Think about the area, the communities, the development, the growth, the praise, the praise value prior to COVID, during COVID, square footage, what other houses are being built in the area? What are the what are things are they're selling in your area? But do your research. Definitely is something that I encourage people to do as opposed to look at the pretty house. I want it. Okay, next. Elk Grove is crowded. <laughs> Love Lincoln and Rockland. Okay, I get it. You know, Elk Grove is flat. 
It just is, right? But it has man-made lakes. Um, it is a little crowded, I got to say. Some of the houses that were built were a little bit, you know, uh, the density there at some places can be. But like if you look at a place like Sabo, where he bought, I mean, he got like two acres in beautiful Elk Grove. So here's the thing. Like I tell people all the time, you're only going to make money in real estate and you're only going to see appreciation happen if you do the research by yourself or talk to people who actually know what they're talking about in real estate in, in the area. So I would say if you're an Elk Grove, fantastic, figure it out. You know, like, or reach out to our team. You know, we're always available to you. And I'm always talking to people on the phone too about this stuff. So feel free to call. Um, but at the same time, I love Lincoln too. I think Rockland's awesome as well. Um, I think Lincoln is going to be interesting though. I, I swear, Lincoln is building so much. They've got a new high school. They've got all these houses being built. For me, I just wonder if it can continue. And hopefully it does. Like I said, I mean, one of the things that we're going to see right now is within the next few months, how much inventory is going to come back. Hopefully we go higher, which would be nice for a lot of my buyers who are getting a little frustrated, but it's all good. Okay. Please explain the basic steps of home buying process. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Closing cost too. Okay. Home buying is, Ooh, this is, this could be a video, but I will do, I'll do. Here's the thing. I will do cliff notes right now. And then next week or the week after I will talk about the home buying process and I'll bring in a couple other realtors as well to help me with the situation and just talk it through. Home buying process is a lot, <laughs> but here's basic cliff notes. Number one is before you even start looking for a home, before you're out there looking, go to a lender, a mortgage broker, figure out what your credit is, what house you can buy, like all that stuff. Factor in HOAs, factor in fire insurance and everything too. So you kind of understand exactly how much you're going to spend. It's vital. Let me put it this way. The last thing you want to do is show your husband or your wife a million dollar house because you did one of those online calculators and then you find out you're only qualified for $800,000 after you found a couple million dollar houses that you love. <coughs> so figure out your budget. Going to a mortgage broker, a good one, like New Way, Matt the Mortgage Guy, they're awesome. They're people I've worked with. I love working with them because they're good at what they do. So you find out basically like what your pre-approval amount is. Okay, that's number one. Next thing, you shop around for a realtor. You know, I would say stay away from like, you know, the Zillow stuff or everything too. All those reviews are basically the same. Makes you wonder if they're bought or not. Not saying they are, but makes you wonder. Okay, so I would say interview realtors. Talk to a few on the phone. Hey, how's it going? How long have you been in the business? How much volume do you do? What areas do you specialize in? Yada, yada, yada. Find the realtor that works for you. You're going to know. It's not hard. I mean, honestly, like I talk to people over the phone all the time and you just have to have rapport. You have to have a realtor that basically will pick up the phone. And that's kind of one of the things that's funny is um, people all the time call me and I pick up my phone like right away. I have OCD about that majorly. Um, but they're like, yeah, you know, I didn't think you'd pick up. Yes, I pick up. This is what I do. This is what I love to do. So find yourself a very good realtor, someone who knows the market and everything. And then I would say start getting educated about the areas with the realtor. If you know the area, great. If you don't know the area, have them pick a few areas that you think would work for you talk a little bit about what you're looking for. Be specific, super, super specific about what you're looking for. Um, the more specific you are, for for example, for me, I'm always telling my clients to be super specific because I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to waste my time either. If you're looking for something that is like, let's say, two-story, high ceilings, nothing built over 2011, I want some nice backsplashes, farmhouse chic, I want something with a nice pool, or if it doesn't have a pool, I want something with a nice size backyard. I don't want to be too close to my neighbors, yada, 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 yada. Be super, super specific. What, what do you like? Know that straight up. Don't just like see stuff and say, oh, out of the 10 things you showed me, that's the one I want. That doesn't work. So be specific about what you're looking for. Then send, um, send your realtor a little bit of a timeline of what you're looking for, like, or like when your ideal time to move would be. And then once you're doing that, then start looking. Like I take clients on tours all the time. I'm going to pick up one at the airport, an awesome doctor who's flying in from Kansas City tomorrow at nine o'clock at the airport. And we're gonna be looking at penthouse lofts all throughout downtown San Francisco or uh, Sacramento, which is gonna be really, really fun. But I already know exactly what he's looking for. Um, and so for the most part, I know what he's looking for. And then 
it's my job prior to going to show the houses to do a little research on the area. But I don't mean a generalized like, hey, this is downtown. I just mean about the building. How many units have moved? Price per square footage, updates, upgrades, um, the situation of the seller and all that stuff. And then once we go see if he likes the place, I'll be able to tell him exactly what the situation is on that. And for the most part, I'll be able to have the realtor, the realtor of the other property or the property we're seeing on speed to give him a call. So there's a lot of steps that go into basically the home buying process. Um, that's a little taste, but how about this? Um, I will go into it more in depth, maybe not this week or next week, but the week after on a live from start to finish, including closing costs. Now, Kieran, also, if you want to feel free to give me a call. Now I'll run through every single step. We have a whole guide, PDF guideline on the home buying process. In fact, my buddy Jacob is actually going to create a course about the home buying process too. And what I'll do is I will actually forward your comment over to him so I can get you the course for free. Pretty cool. And um, it's on me. So it's, it's all good. So hopefully that works. And like I said, I'll go into it more in depth, but there are a lot of steps and I want to be thorough with your question. And I just want to like rattle some stuff off. So, and I'm a little sick too. Shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, Christian. Boom. Flew over Sacramento, going to LA and there's a lot of like, yeah, there's a lot of land. That's pretty cool though, right? I mean, you think about it, other markets are kind of like if all of a sudden they need to have more housing or whatnot, they don't have it. Sacramento is one of the most aggressive new home builders in the entire United States. And what does that do for us? That helps us get our inventory back quicker, quicker, quicker. And we have land so we can keep that going. We're going to have a nice custom home area, probably in Serrano popping up over on what's called uh, Raphael building, building, building because Sacramento has the land. And that's one of the things that I actually love about this area. Because for me as a realtor, I could have gone anywhere, opened up a YouTube channel and done my thing. But the thing about Sacramento that I really, really love is the fact that its potential is limitless in my opinion. And I'm seeing it happen. I mean, you know, like I don't want to say I called it, but if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll see there wasn't too much that I wasn't off on. So, you know, pat myself on the back on that one. Okay, next. Live where you like best. Well, Elk Grove is a great place to live, though. <laughs> and that's the thing, though. And that's one of the things that makes... Oh, my God. I'm going to get on my soapbox real quick. That's what makes the thing about Sacramento and the area so amazing is like Elk Grove is so much different than Serrano. Serrano is different than Rockland. Rockland's different than Roseville. And in those areas, there's so many different styles of houses. There's so many different areas you can live in. You want to live by a golf course? Hey, Morgan Creek, Catavadera. You want to live by the water? Hey, we got Folsom. We got Grand Bay. You want to views? Hey, we got El Dorado Hills. We got we got everything going on. You want some amazing areas near downtown? We got Elk Grove. You want something close to Bay Area too? You got some great land, man-made lakes. Every little piece of Sacramento, for the most part, I don't want to say it's all completely different, but I can honestly tell you this. We've been working with so many people moving into the area who underestimated Sacramento as far as being able to deliver what they wanted. And I would say if you're someone who doesn't know Sacramento and you haven't come into the area yet, let our team set you up with a tour and tell us exactly what you want. Honestly, I can almost guarantee you we're going to find you what you're looking for. Might take a little bit of time, but we'll get it done for you. All right. Next question. Hello, Vanessa. Will affordable housing decrease uh, property values for current owners? No, I don't think it, I don't. I don't think it will. Here's the thing with affor affordable housing: what you're going to notice it is it's going to pop up almost like new home building in various other areas where the housing already is competitive with that. So I wouldn't worry that much about it. Um, you're not going to see it. And also, what area are you specifically looking for too? I think um, if you want to email me and I can tell you where I've seen pockets of affordable housing being popping up, like in South Sacramento, there's going to be some affordable housing. I think I, I put that on the live last week. So there is affordable housing. It's not going to throw property values out of whack completely. I promise you that. Um, what it will do though, is it'll give some first time home buyers and people that desperately need housing, housing in Sacramento. Cause here's the thing. One of the things that's making Sacramento so attractive to people is the fact that it's an affordable city to live in, in California, right? So if our price keeps going up and up and up and up and up, that's going to be, we're going to lose that title. And it's probably going to really affect, really hurt our housing market because first time home buyers are going to say, you know what? Sacramento is way too expensive. I don't want to move there. We're not there yet. 
hopefully one day we get there to a point where it's like it's like something like crazy because then all our property prices will go up sky high. But for the right for right now, um, it's not there, and we want affordable housing. We want that stuff happening to Sacramento. That's my two cents. Okay. Have you had any buyers or sellers in Plumas Lake? What are your thoughts on Plumas Lake? Oh man. Okay. So here's the thing about Plumas Lake. I had, I was selling a 29 acre property right next to the uh, Plumas uh, Lake. I think it was a golf course right there. And then they shut down the golf course. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I think that like for a lot of people, I think that we're, we're going to see is because there's a lot of land over in Plumas Lake, um, that area. So I, I see a lot of people that are maybe not able to afford currently Sacramento prices that can go over to places like Oliver's, um, what's called Marysville, like, um, Plumas Lake. I think new home builders like Richmond American are building out there and you're going to get something probably at this point, maybe about a hundred to uh, probably a hundred thousand dollars cheaper than somewhere like a Sacramento, Sacramento. So I do think that it is somewhere that, is going to eventually through osmosis kind of grow. I mean, remember what they say, like you always want to be around, if you're around someone who's getting a cold, you're going to sneeze. So the idea is areas like, you know, what is it like, um, like Woodland and Davis, right? Woodland is developing really, really nicely because Davis is right close by and Davis needs the additional housing. So it's pulling off of Woodland. Sacramento is, even though we are building new housing and we have all that stuff going on, it's still, allows a, it still allows areas like Marysville, Plumas Lake and all of hers to develop. Because here's the thing, we still at this point need that housing. And you're seeing a lot of people who are maybe priced out of Sacramento moving to those areas. So I do think Plumas Lake definitely has, um, has potential. I mean, honestly, it's not too, too far out. And at the end of the day, if Sacramento's downtown develops and everything kind of starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to push it out to probably like somewhere like a Plumas Lake. And I like Plumas Lake. I like the area. I think the development out there is kind of nice. And I think that I've seen some big houses being built there. I think the infrastructure probably needs to be put in place a little bit more for Plumas Lake, but I like the area. I think, I think it's nice. I think it's a, you can get a good bang for your butt back, uh, Good bang for your buck out there. All right, Vanessa. Rancho has some great new builds. Love Elliot. Yeah, Rancho's got some really, really nice stuff. Um, you know, what was it called? Uh, Elliot was also building in Fair Oaks. They had a really sweet uh, community in Fair Oaks too. No one was really building in Fair Oaks. There were some people building in Citrus Heights, uh, KB, I think, uh, and Black Pines. Um, but for the most part, like Elliot had a super, super nice community in Fair Oaks, um, right kind of near Kenneth, um, which I really liked as well. Elliot's a great builder too. Uh, they're a little mom and popish, but they're a good builder as well. Um, Rancho's nice. I think, um, you know, they're building in different, in Anatolia, that, that area is going to be so nice. Not to mention like what I was talking about, the whole Elk Grove connecting to El Dorado Hills, Anatolia is going to be part of that as well. So I like the ranch. I like the Anatolia area too. I think it's, it's nice. I think the only thing, the only takeaway I would say about Anatolia is it does feel a little far from everything. Um, so that was the only thing, but I think at the end of the day, if you look at 2007, 2008, before the crash, they were building like crazy there. They started up again. They're going like crazy. The houses are really nice. You can find million dollar homes out there. Um, like I said, the only weak point of Anatolia is the fact that it is a little bit far away from things. But other than that, I think it, it's a good bang for your buck. And um, it's in the Elk Grove Unified School District. All right. Are FHAs winning any offers? Yeah, absolutely. FHAs are winning offers. I've got Aaron and I from New Way Mortgage. We've done VAs. We've done FHAs and everything. It's Here's the thing about FHA deals and VA deals for the most part. It's all about being realistic with your client. And also about really, really knowing which houses they can get into and not have the listing agent question, right? <clears throat> the last thing you want to do is have a listing agent like think that it won't go through a VA deal or an FHA deal. So you have to be very specific on picking your houses. You got to go more turnkey. And if you do have a house that a client absolutely loves but needs work, you have to have a plan in place, i.e., hey, it's okay. Guess what? My buyers will pay for the pest. Okay, there there's different ways to go around it, but for someone in this market to work with FHA buyers or VHA buyers, you really got you. First of all, you have to take them on, which we do straight up. FHA, VA, you name it, we work with everyone. We treat everyone amazing. 
um, because everyone deserves a, a, a great experience getting their house. Um, but I do know a lot of realtors, they're turning away VA, they're turning away FHA because in this market, which is still a seller's market, it's, it's hard to do. Um, I don't believe that. Honestly, hit me up with an impossible, um, impossible uh, um, situation. I'd love to take it on. Those things really get my team going. So um, as far as VAs, FHAs, we've definitely been putting them in contract. In fact, I could probably give you some numbers of some FHA people and VA people that, um, that we worked with. In, in fact, we just closed on a house. You'll see it on Zillow if you want to. 8,400 Gaylor. And that was an FHA deal. And we just closed that thing two days ago. Sweet house with a pool. Oof. And it appraised, ready for this one? $10,000 over the offer my client put in and he was FHA. Boom. And if you don't believe me, go to Zillow, 8,400 Gaylor. Oof, it was a great deal. And Andrew, you're awesome. Um, okay. Karen, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. New home builders uh, crawling back to you yet looking for business or still being worse. No, they are. I mean, I don't think they're, I wouldn't say crawling back to me, but they're making me aware of some amazing deals that they have going on right now. I think everyone right now, you're seeing everyone kind of be a little nervous about the market, what's going on and all this kind of stuff. So I think there's a little bit of a nervousness. I think, you know, people are wondering what happens after this whole thing, ha you know, what happens with 2022? I think that's the thing about anyone. Like, I don't care who they are, YouTuber, like whoever, like 2022 is a scary thing for a lot of people. We don't know where interest rates are going up. We don't know what type of inventory we're looking at, you know, all that stuff, bond tapering. I mean, there's a whole lot of variables hitting the market. Um, we don't even know if like, you know, in a week or two, we're going to be hit by COVID, another strain. And all of a sudden, what's that impact going to have to the housing market? So there's a lot of people stressing out about 2022. They want to make sure that whatever they have, it's sold. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being politely informed about what is available from the new home companies. But, you know, I would do the same. All right. How do those Redfin um, tours work when it's listed by an agent from a different company? You know, I'm not really too familiar with the Redfin thing. I do know that a lot of the agents that I talk to that do work for Redfin, and I don't think it's a bad way to go. I think everyone's got to make their own decision, and, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's more of like a salary thing. So they get salary, they show the houses. So I think that they make their money more via salary as opposed to that. And I think on the listing side, I'm not sure if the, it's salary or they just do the the 1% or something like that. But yeah, Redfin's got a, a kind of a, I've never really dove deep into the Redfin kind of model. You know, they, they hit me up maybe like once every week um, to join up, but I've never really dove deep into the model. Like I said, and I was talking about this with Aaron on Monday, I, I came into real estate because I just like, I, I can do stuff like YouTube, right? Um, I can kind of like right wrongs in 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 transactions that are happening. I have a lot of fluidity to do stuff that I want to do. And I didn't ever want it to be kind of stopgap by any company like a Redfin, like a Zillow, like whatever else. So that that just isn't ever anything that I would ever look into myself. Um, but I do think Redfin is, a you know, I, I know I was, I was going off on them on, on Monday, but I do think they're you know a good company. I think for anyone looking to get into real estate, the thing you need to do before anything else is get yourself educated about real estate, right? To learn and to develop. But I do think also with companies like Redfin and whatnot, like you're nervous, right? You you crutch onto something like a brokerage or or like a company or whatnot. You crutch onto them so much that you don't really feel that like you can do it on your own. And I think that when you go out on your own and you just do your thing, um, like I do, on YouTube, it really takes your service, your kind of like responsibility for your clients to a whole new level. Um, you know, and that's kind of what I like. I like the accountability factor that like, if I say something, especially live or on a video that, you know, this is, this is just what it is. So, um, I'm sorry about that. It's probably the cold medicine, but hopefully that answered a little bit of your Redfin question. All right. Next question. I think by 2024, uh, deflation is going to hit us hard start saving for investment properties. I know. I mean, 2024. Woo. That's a long way away. The thing about this market that's been crazy more than anything too, because you know, the usual market prior to COVID was, I mean, I don't want to say it was stable, but we didn't have as many quick turns. You know what I mean? And this, this year has taught us like this, 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 this. I mean, 
it's funny prior to COVID 2024, I think people would have actually made, made, um, made a thought of like thinking about it or wanting to talk about it. But for me, I'm just trying to get through the months and hopefully everything goes right for my buyers and my sellers and the market goes, goes decent. 2024, man. Hey, let's just focus on 2022 because it is going to be a crazy, crazy 2022. I mean, cr I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be a crazy 2000 end of 2021, as we've seen with Thanksgiving. Ooh, so many, they're not, I mean, literally a handful of houses. That's that's as much inventory you have. Crazy. Okay. So Lenar is still pushing uh prices, Antolia. Lenar is an interesting beast. They do, they definitely are pushing up prices, but they're doing it like here's the thing with Lenar. I had I had an opportunity to put a person into a, a Lenar house in Anatolia. And I, I think it was like I forget what the price point was, but they actually offered him a bigger house for that price point. Lenar is a big business. So you have to understand for them, like they don't suffer, like they don't do the losses like your little, the mom and pop builders like Kahob or like, or like what's called or Watt communities or something like that. They're very much like a machine. So yeah, I mean, they're going to keep pushing up the envelope left and right. And they're probably going to leverage it based on probably other communities like North Lake that have just exploded. So yeah, Lenar is a different, uh, like I said, Lenar, you build a good house, not knocking you at all. I just wish you'd focus more on customer service and kind of just being good to your clients about that stuff and just communicating and just not squeezing everyone so much. That's my only two cents on that one. Give me that as a holiday present. All right, Ron, what is up, my friend? All right, can you tell me about New Home Company coming to Roseville? You know, New Home Company is going to be building in Roseville. My guess is the building in Roseville is going to be kind of similar to what we've saw up at Whitney Ranch. Um, like I said, I think the one-off that I saw for New Home Company up at, New, at, at, at Russell Ranch, that's not in my... What I've seen from New Company, that's not... That's like new market. That that's a new luxury market they hit. So I would say new home company in Roseville is probably going to be a little bit like the Whitney Ranch um, homes that they were building. Like, and it was nuts. I mean, like truthfully, like if you got into one of those new home companies back in the day, Whitney Ranch, I mean, those things were selling for like five fifty. I mean, easily like eight fifty, nine hundred thousand dollars houses at this point. Uh, but I'd say like at Roseville, you're probably kind of looking at that. And Ron. Um, give me a call tomorrow. I'll let you know a little information. I'll text my uh, contact over at New Home and see if I can get a little beat on exactly price points, what type of community it's going to be and all that kind of stuff too for you. So I can do that for you. Just give me a call tomorrow. Remind me because um, I will be on NyQuil in about an hour. Um, other than that though, I would say like the Roseville vibe comparatively towards Whitney Ranch and even Russell Ranch where the New Home Company building is going to be different, right? Like the Russell Ranch area and um, the Whitney Ranch area, in my opinion, were kind of like almost like one-offs, right? There are these kind of cool communities up on the hill in really like, you know, in a really sought after kind of areas um, with a lot of, you know, different kind of quality builders up there as well. I think if you want to look at what Russell Ranch um, is going to be in the future, maybe go to Whitney Ranch and take a look at it. And then um, I think Russell Ranch is going to be like Whitney Ranch on steroids. So I think Russell Ranch is going to be crazy up there too. So I'll tell you this, like, you know, we all have to keep our eye on that whole appreciation meter and see how, how houses are doing. But for the most part, um, I'll tell you though, Russell Ranch is going to be super, super it's going to be amazing out there. You know, not to mention they've only done phase one and now they're going to do phase two and three. Oh, and Ron, like I said, hit me up tomorrow. I'll give you a little intel on Roseville. Like I said, I'll text my contact um, after I get off the live. All right, Kieran. All right. Is DR Horton Homes good to buy in Lincoln? Uh, DR Horton, I love you and I hate you. I love you and I hate you. The thing about DR Horton that I don't like is the fact that um, they don't do new homes like normal builders do new homes. They do new homes almost like a regular house is hitting the market. So you don't know what you're, you know, they, they put it out there, they get all the offers in and then they, you know, they bid it up and all this kind of stuff too. So I'm not a big fan of that. I, I think that like with new homes, you know, and hopefully it gets to this way in 2022, you can kind of walk on in, choose a model, choose all this kind of stuff and then just leave. Um, DR Horton, I think their homes are okay. I, I don't, I've never heard too many people go like, wow, like with DR Horton houses, I think they're more on the affordable scale. Um, but I will say one thing though, like a new home is a new home. I mean, honestly, like 
I mean, I, I don't think I've seen too many com people complain, complain with DR Horton houses as well. The only thing for me that I always get kind of like hits me the wrong way is, is that um, they shouldn't put houses at that price tag and then just balloon them up through bidding or through offers. I think, you know, if they're going to do something, they should kind of do it um, to the point where a person can buy it for that amount. And hopefully they build more for that. Cause like I said, I think Sacramento does need a little bit more affordable housing Lincoln too. So it'd be nice to see there. I mean, truth is like Lincoln right now to get a brand new home under 600,000 is not an easy thing to do by any shape or, you know, you maybe you get a small patio home, but not something that you, you know, you're thinking of as far as a, a Lincoln home. Um, I will say this though. Um, some things to look for when you're looking at builders, um, the size of the granite, um, the, how can you say it? Like the, the wood in the doors, you know what I mean? Some doors tend to be light. I'd say like knock on the walls to see how many two by fours or the type of insulation they're using. Uh, I would say the spacing of the hallways. Um, I would say also the ceiling height. I would always say the fixtures in, in the kitchen, because here's the thing, the majority of the model homes are going to be like, the model homes are basically it. Like, you know, we're talking every upgrade in the, in the book is thrown into the model homes to get you. So stuff like that. The other thing too is I would also look at the paint, the edges of paint that you see on the houses and the model homes. If that's their model home and they basically made sure it was pristine before they threw it out there for the public, you know, and, and you know, the paint is kind of running and all that kind of stuff, that's stuff to watch. So I'd say do that. The other thing too, is I would say that go to a bunch of different builders and feel the different quality. You can feel it. And I know there's a few clients I've worked with that I tell this to, and they don't, they're like, yeah, yeah. And then they walk in there like, you're totally right. You can feel the quality of the build. So I would say for you, if you're looking at DR Horton, you want to compare it. I would say go to DR Horton. I would say go to like Beezer at Grayson uh, um, in Lincoln, go to KB and then maybe go to Kehov and Taylor um, in that whole area and just gauge the level of quality. You're going to feel it, you know, in the doors and the walls in the size of the planks on the floor. I mean, you're going to feel the difference and you're going to know if it's a good, if it's what you like or if it's what you don't like. All right. What would you approach Lenar about getting a bigger house? How would you, you know, that was a funny thing. I didn't approach him. They approached uh, my client. My client's like, oh my God, they're offering me a bigger house now for the same price that I, I was going to pay for this other model. Now, I don't know if the model he was looking at was the more popular model or not, but he was, of course, he went for the bigger house, which which was great. Um, but yeah, no, no. Lennard, yeah, their communication is horrible. If, even if I tried to send smoke signals to Lennar about anything like that, that they would have never done it. They They work on their own timetable. So don't, yeah. Trust me, it wasn't any magic wand I had. It was just basically like, they did what? They sent you what? Do you want the bigger house? You do? Okay. That was pretty much it. All right. Is Sacramento housing boring for someone moving from the Bay Area? Um, honestly, like that, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've moved in a lot of people during the course of this year um, from the Bay Area last year too. But I, you know, with YouTube, you have to understand a lot of my clients are people who come from out of town moving into Sacramento. And I've never had anyone complain about it. Everyone's usually excited. Sabo, he was on here a little while ago. He moved in from the Bay Area and he had tons of friends. And, and like the thing that was so funny about him is he was so nervous about being away from stuff, right? And now he's like chilling in this jacuzzi in Elk Grove, hanging out. I got people who've moved in from San Jose to Fair Oaks. Not one complaint, super excited, super happy. I don't really know of one client that I've moved here um, that has really kind of like been bored or missed, missed the Bay Area or whatnot, um, you know, as far as living, as far as like friends going back and all this kind of stuff, it's not that far. I mean, to be totally honest, I mean, you know, it's not like you're going to go there every single day, but it's nice to have that trip and everything too. But here's the thing at the end of the day, if COVID taught us anything, it was the fact that number one is we don't spend enough time with the family. And if I'm spending time with my family and I love my six-year-old and I love my wife, but I'm going to tell you something straight up. I want a big house with a pool, with a patio, with all the stuff, space for YouTube studios and all that stuff. Like I want something that I can live in and it doesn't feel claustrophobic. I want something that like has space, you know, like 
and I don't know. I mean, maybe that's my age, right? Maybe being older, it's like, I like the Netflix life. I'm good with it. I like going to Costco and shopping up a bunch of stuff, bringing it home. I love having friends over, jumping in the pool, relaxing, you know, all the summer. I don't know. And you're talking to a guy who like in his twenties was living, I lived on the top of Knob Hill on Jackson and I loved it. I, I would go to all the various areas during the weekend. It was fun because that was my lifestyle back then. So do I think that you're going to miss the Bay Area if you move to Sacramento? I don't think so. I think, I think if anything, you might want to take a weekend for me to show you some of Sacramento and maybe the Sacramento that you haven't seen. And once I do that, you might be putting your house on the market in about a week. So just, just saying, if not, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> Chris, oh, Chris, I'm going to call you Chris Drake Harrison. Chris uh, got himself into contract at Taylor Morrison. Don't be envious, all you people out there. He got himself into contract with a Drake, Taylor Morrison, Madeira Meadows about a month and a half back. And um, and it, I mean, this the, the yard size he has. He can probably put another Drake in the backyard. So <laughs> the world is pretty much turned upside down. But do you know of any other builders cutting options after you're in contract with options selected? No, no. And honestly, Chris, why don't you give me a call tomorrow and let me know, let me, let's catch up a little bit on this option stuff too. Like I said, um, I know a lot of people in Taylor, so I'll see if there's anything like I can do and all that stuff. And I know you mentioned that you were looking about getting a painter. Um, I've already put calls into three painters that I like. Um, it just makes me nervous to put a painter in to a house that's brand new it could be honestly super sweet. You know, I just, it just gets me nervous and I'm sure for you the same way, you don't want to spend over a million dollars and then just, so, you know, but if you can give me a call tomorrow and let's talk a little bit about your experience so far at the Taylor, the Drake, um, and also about what we can get done for you, um, to get you basically out the door from, from that and get you in your house. Okay. So give me a call Chris tomorrow if you can. Um, and, and we'll, we'll, uh, talk it over a little bit too. Okay. This is DR Horton homes in Lincoln in March. That was my first and last time. Yeah. And that's the thing. Here's the thing. You need to go, don't go to just one new home company. Also, you want to go to a bunch of them. You're going to be able to see quality, feel quality, all that kind of stuff. And that's the truth. And you're going to notice the quality definitely comes with the price tag of the house. Um, for me, for all around, like, Number three hitter in the lineup for baseball, I would say Bezer is pretty good, right? I don't think they do too crazy on their upgrades. I think literally you can get out the door in one of their like floor models. You know, the models are all decked out for like 29K in upgrades. I think they do what's called a full wrap around the house. So their houses are very, very, very energy efficient. Um, and I think Bezer does a good home, right? I think... You know, if you're looking for something and you're thinking to yourself, I want something that appreciates, Beezer Homes tend to do that as well. Um, but if you're looking for something solid, like I said, I, I love the Beezer Homes out there in Roseville because of the depth of the yard and everything too. Um, but yeah, you got to tell, you got to check it out for yourself and you got to go to various builders to figure out exactly which one feels right for you, which one have the updates. And also the other thing too, about the builders is you got to figure out which ones have the floor plans that work for you. Don't just grab a house because you grab a house, figure out what, how your life is. Do you need a big room concept? Do you, do you need like a master or a main bedroom downstairs, main room upstairs? Like, are what are you looking for? Right. Before you even go, go searching for a home, whether it's new or pre-owned, figure out exactly what you want in a house, right? Even before Zillow lures you in, like write down that list of the things that you want in a house, right? It's easy to jump into a Hallmark movie and say, hey, I want a 4,000 square foot house. We're going to have Thanksgiving here and all this kind of stuff. When in reality, maybe you just don't do that. So a good way that I tell people too, whether it's a new home or whether it's a pre-owned home, is to write down that list of all your wants, right? Realistically, how much square footage do you want? Like I'm sure... Any, everyone can afford the moon, but be realistic about it. Do you really want to be those people that have that living room with a plastic furniture or like that guest room that no one goes in? I mean, that's, yeah, that, that's no bueno for the, for the, for the heating bill, especially if uh, your electricity bill, especially if you live in a placer, which is PG and E. All right. Next question. Who are average quality builders? Look at the first time home buyers. Uh, who are average quality builders? 
Uh, Beezer. Beezer's great. Talk to Shannon or Jody over at Beezer, Natomas, Roseville. They're awesome. I love Beezer. All, a lot of my first time home buyers go directly to Beezer. They never have a problem. They're treated like royalty and it's awesome. Um, but I mean, depending on your price range, you could probably go it, depending on your price range. And that's a big one. And like here, like I said, give me a call tomorrow. If you want to, we can talk price range and all that fun stuff. Um, but I'll point you in the directions of the builders that I would suggest for you. Okay. Yeah, no problem, Chris. All right. Wendy, do you know anything about TriPoint? They're next to Beezer at Roseville. Ooh. Okay. Here's the thing I don't like about TriPoint is their backyards are super, super small. So the density of TriPoint, I love the floor plans. I think their upgrades are nice. I just think they feel small for the price. Like I think Beezer with that backyard, you know, you can put in a pool and everything too compared to TriPoint. I don't know. It's, it's tough. I'll be honest with you. I like TriPoint. I like the people that work there. They're super nice and everything too. I just, if I had the money to buy one house between TriPoint or Beezer, um, especially in that Roseville area, Beezer, it would probably go on Beezer all the way just um, because of the backyard space. And um, that's one of the things I don't get. I don't understand why these builders don't build a little bit deeper of a backyard, especially TriPoint, because they have the same problem in Roseville and they have the same problem in Rockland. The backyards are just tiny for the amount of money you're paying. That's just my two cents. Okay. Well, hopefully that helped too. And if you have any follow-up questions about TriPoint, let me know. Like I've shown TriPoint left and right. So, um, you know, and they're a good builder. Like I said, I just wish the backyards in those two communities would be built bigger. All right. Reviews on Woodbury and Bradshaw, Richmond American Homes in Elk Grove. Um, man, I'll tell you one thing now, it's getting scarce to find new homes in like in those areas. I mean, honestly, like Elk Grove. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, you know, I think though, a lot of people, what I've heard about Richmond American over there, it feels a lot more like Sacramento and less like Elk Grove. And so it's turned them off. Um, but like I said, right now, the hardest part is until that new Taylor Morrison community develops out in 2022, um, I'm not seeing too many. Or Tim Lewis might be building in Elk Grove, though. But other than that, though, Elk Grove for right now, there's not a whole lot of people building new houses. Why is that a little dangerous? Well, number one is because who knows what interest rates are going to be like next year. Imagine like all of a sudden Taylor starts selling their new community sometime mid next year and you can get your house, what, like 2023? No one knows what interest rates are going to be like now. That's the biggest point. But I will tell you one thing though. I know that you're probably loving the new home thing because new homes are, are awesome. I'm not going to lie. You walk into new homes and that's all you want. But I will say though, and I'm, I said this repetitively, on a couple videos I've done, I do think right now there is a market for the houses that are maybe like three years old, like you know, four years old, something around there in Elk Grove. I think if you can hone in on some of the houses, because I do, I have been noticing in Elk Grove that now and again, maybe like you'll see maybe one or two or three a week pop up. And these are homes that are maybe like one, two, three years old. They're like Lennar, they're Taylor's or Richmond that are popping up because a lot of the people that I've seen are actually moving into like other homes, right? Newer homes, maybe in Elk Grove and they're selling these houses. They're only three years old. Now, the thing about these houses in this kind of like bracket of like between one and three and four years old is that the truth is what I've noticed in these houses. Number one is the landscaping is already done. That's at least what, like maybe between like 20 and like, depending if you go with a pool, about 150,000 for the landscaping. Number two is you don't have to deal with a lot of people building a house next to you or a park developing here and dealing with construction trucks, windshield, getting those stones in them and all that stuff. And that does happen, nails and tires. So you already have a community that's developed and you can kind of gauge. So I will tell you one thing though, even though you're in love with that whole new home feel and everything too, I would say keep your eyes peeled for houses that are maybe between one and three years old. Um, I can almost guarantee you I've only, I, I've seen these houses and they're treat they're they're in mint condition. They still normally have the open concept and they're ready to rock. So I would say that if you're someone who really, really, really wants a new home and is kind of fearful of interest rates happening and no one's building in your area, honestly, I would say start looking around for houses that are maybe between one and three years old, Elk Grove, Natomas, a Folsom or whatnot, or even Whitney Ranch, which I just closed a little while ago. That house, honestly, the upgrades that the person put into the house with the backyard 
and with the additional lighting and everything, I can guarantee you that he put in at least $400,000 worth of upgrades to that house. And, you know, so for me, that's awesome that you don't have to do with the landscaping. And if, you know, you walk into the house and it has that nice open concept, you have a house that doesn't have to deal with settling cracks or anything. So I'd say for you guys who are looking for new homes, new homes, new homes, new homes, they're not building an Elk Grove. Keep your eyes peeled for those one to three year homes because you can get them right away with a with the interest rate as it is now instead of waiting till you know 2022 or 2023. And that is my thoughts on that. All right, Renee, how are you doing? What do you think of Blue Mountain Community Builder in Reserve Silver Spring in Rescue California? I like Blue Mountain. I think they're they're very affordable, efficient houses. Um, I don't know that specific community um, in Silver Springs. Um, but I do like Blue Mountain overall. I've gone to their communities in Granite Bay, in Natomas, and I love their communities. So um, I think they're a good builder. I think they're they're very efficient about their builds. They're smart. Um, and I think the price points, as far as I've seen in like areas like Granite Bay and Natomas, um, especially in Natomas, I mean, seriously, like you can get a three bedroom, two bath, brand new house uh, under like 450 in the Thomas single family home doesn't really look it looks a little townhouse ish, but still it's just for, for the price point that you're seeing around it. I think blue mountain definitely is a good builder. Um, in my opinion. All right, guys, if there are any more questions, let me know now or I will do my outro and then I will see you next Monday where Aaron and I will be talking about the real estate market in general. We're going to be talking about, I don't know what we're going to be talking about to be totally honest with you, but it's gonna be an awesome topic. It's gonna be something that hit the news probably this weekend so we can keep you updated with the latest and greatest in the real estate market. Until next time, guys, I am out of here. Hopefully you guys have an amazingly safe, fun evening. And um, I'll have a vlog being released in this weekend. I don't know where it's going to be. Maybe El Dorado Hill is going up there. And that's it, guys. Until next time, I'm out of here. Have a good one. Oh, also, please like the video, comment, share. It means a whole lot to me, honestly. And I'm sick as a dog, but I'm doing this for you guys. Bye. Guess what, guys? The video just ended. But don't worry, we have more videos just like that one right over there. And if you missed that red subscribe button during the course of the video, we got you covered right there. Hit that subscribe button. We promise to bring you some amazing content. We won't let you down. Now, if you're looking for a team in the Sacramento metro area to work with, we'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We always include a Zoom link down below. So book a time where we can talk to you a little one-on-one, -on -one, find out exactly what your real estate needs are.